this week on Hermitcraft. I like being creepy. That's my style, right? Uh, hang on. No, no, no. You're encroaching on my very clearly defined creepy style. But Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap. My name is Pixel Riffs. Our writer is Loy XP, and this season of Hermitcraft is brought to you by the colour brown. It seems many hermits are reaching conclusion with their starter bases, and more and more of them have been moving out to more long-term base locations, which in seasons past has been a concern. It's nice to see everyone close together and interacting. Luckily this time, the group seems to have decided that their expanded large-scale plans can in fact coexist, and so plenty of people have been revealing their upcoming base locations as the same spot by a Mega Tiger forest. Sure, not everyone likes the Podzle, and people have been picking areas removed enough to be their own biomes, but it's still a fact that in the background of most of the group we'll see a spruce forest for the foreseeable future. Is that actually an issue? No. With how addicted this bunch is to spruce trapdoors, the woods will be gone by next Sunday. Even Podzle isn't safe, unless they start another turf war over it. Another thing bringing the hermits together is the offer of a nice egg in this trying time, and it's worth it just to see their reactions to what their spawn eggs would look like. Because these are custom models commissioned by iJevin, and the goal is of course to hide one of your eggs in as many hermits' nests as possible, or as we like to think of it, the cuckoo challenge. Quite sensibly, many of them avoid showing the locations they've hidden the stealthy over in their own videos, and we'll try our best not to give the game away here, although by the time this video has come out, the hunt has already begun. Let's just hope they find all of these before they hatch. And with that out of the way, let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. Starting with Joe Hills, who plans to break ground in the new shopping district by setting up an axolotl shop, but it turns out the ground he's trying to break is only five blocks thin. We have gone too far for my scaffolding to get me back up. <gasps> okay. I think I found the cave that they said we should put the shops in. When an auspicious patch of diamond ore suggests itself as a starting point, Joe circles back to his thinking cave where he can draft ideas and conveniently catch more stock. By that time the egg hunt is ready and he goes from rick rolling to egg rolling, but once he's done putting his eggs in as many baskets as possible, the shop front is built in the shape of a giant bucket of axolotl, and Jevin and Cleo have shown up to help him create an entrance to the shopping cave using some explosives. Jeff, you're not too close to that wall, are you? Uh-oh. I am <laughs> literally standing on the wall. A much less controlled blow upage, if you can believe it, happens when Zombie Cleo discovers the ruckus her base has been randomly making, much to B Dubs's chagrin. Yeah, that, that, that's a lot. That I'm trying! Get that thing off! I. Gee. <laughs> Would you like to come and see what's happened? To investigate, the two descend into the hell of bells below the surface and do find the off switch, but as we covered in iJevin's segment last week, this of course doesn't off anything but maybe Cleo herself. While fascinated by an extra secret door she just has now at the base, Cleo strays away from redstoning any more noise machines and instead focuses on building up her base, which is how the black cobra head appears out of a nearby crevasse. And is also how we discover Iskal 85 hasn't been to the zoo for a while. Wow. Some sort of elephant monster? That's awesome. Or maybe Older Podzol has just kind of burnt his brain out, because this week Iskal begins a bonsai tree farm inside his cave base and immediately starts farming all the biggest trees in it. Unfortunately, the plan to cover the floor with an aesthetically pleasing moss backfires when the spruce trees convert it all into Mega Tiger dirt. Iskal fires back with the innovation of green concrete powder and moves the whole operation down a couple of blocks, both to make room for the trees and to make sure the astroturf doesn't just fall into the cave below. At least it'll save him money on buying wood, and he still has time to laugh at himself in Iskel Egg T5 form before stashing them everywhere, including on his own head. Can I wear one of the. <laughs> Wait, oh, it's Egg Skull! Azumavoid goes a step further about embracing the Easter event. After a few community costume changes, he decides on a definitive Egg Zuma outfit, and yes, he does indeed have egg on his face. X will, however, not be embarrassed when it comes to redstone, and when Mojang's own jukeboxes prove not entirely compatible, they augment the server with a data pack that makes it much more automatable, all in the name of putting together the ultimate party machine for Coralis's garage. The final contraption even outputs the bamboo for the panda DJ. So DJ Pandalorian just ate, so he's not going to be eating at oh, this stage, but wow. Fun. 
And since they were messing with server packs anyway, X threw in a whole extra music disc into the game. Are you ready I, for it? I think I am. <laughs> <laughs> The parties promise to be extra lit, but hopefully not actually set on fire, like Corallus gets disastrously when building a double spawner blaze farm. Somehow he actually does make it out of the lava chute alive, and with a finished blaze grinder to boot, all to have some glow sticks to sell out of his sauna. Why am I not dying? Why am I not dying? Oh, I'm alive! Though the bathing facilities become extra confusing when the pool Corallus builds suddenly springs not a leak, but a full secret tunnel at the bottom. The warp pipe leads into Good Times with Scar's basement, or rather, into Cubfan135's Good Times with Scar's basement. With his own subterranean hideout flooded, Cub purchases the cavity under Scar's trees, which ironically brings the two back to their roots. If you were to purchase any of these basements, no diamonds required, but I would like, if you could, make a cactus slash bone meal farm. Ooh. Now the area wasn't exactly meant for anyone but bats to inhabit it, so a bit of terraforming is required. But also Cub immediately burrows a secret route out of the place, one that takes advantage of the rails being able to be underwater. Take that splash mountain, most of this rail is through a nearby river, and then you get spit out and possibly elytra launched if you're quick on the shift button. In fact, the whole rail system has an easier time staying underwater than Stress Monster, who turns up to help Gemini Tay with the Guardian farm, only to be handed a snorkel and told to get in the tank. Okay, now I'm, now I'm, now I'm dying. Jim, there's no air! Okay, I got air, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, is that air? Where's the air? <laughs> Well, there's a bit more demolition that happens first, but once the frame is built and the water pours in, Stress is the one planting kelp on soul sand and nearly drowning in a bubble column. Although when she and Iskel head over to sign up for the egg hunt, it turns out she's not the only one. I'm gonna hear you still though, so that's a little bit unfortunate. Jack, mm. come back! <laughs> <laughs> You've got to live a long life, Rose. A long, a long life. If only he had a door on him. The rest of Stress's week is a bit less waterlogged, but no less farmy, as she digs out a space for a melon and pumpkin auto farm that'll help her trade with the farmer villagers, and moves some surplus villagers and a zombie named Plonker into an iron farm, which is soon churning out the good stuff in the heart of the Dark Oak Forest. Elsewhere and underground, XB Crafted has a similar idea, setting up a villager breed and a pipeline to a place they can hang out for a while. In fact, most of these villagers will just be for aesthetics, giving his base a bit of life beyond the azalea shrubs and marauding slimes, but you might as well set up an iron farm with a few of them. And even when Tango is AFK at the Wither Skeleton Farm, which is now basically a mob switch for the server at this point, at least he can rely on a nearby spawner for an unhealthy supply of zombies. XB's base plans also come to light, as he reveals the story behind the big build in the Deep Slate Cave is all about long-vanished giants, underground railways, and people stumbling upon them years later. <clears throat> but I think once that's done, we're gonna build a city inside of this. Y'all know I love to have a story behind my bases. Which is a glimpse at how it feels to be Vintage Beef, who's just grateful to see another human soul when Zombie Cleo visits the Hermitcraft TCG card factory. Beef's been going hard in the paint, with his latest acquisitions being some ice from distant mountains so he can build some potion bottle pixel art. With 24 cards now in the collection, it's looking pretty darn good already, and Beef sends Cleo away with a coupon awarding her a random card just for stopping by. I'm so impressed with this already. I mean, there's, there's take still much, but it's great. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I can, I can tell. I, I mean, I did a map last season. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, no, that wasn't fun. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how you managed to do all this. They take a long time. He has to make a stop of his own at the Prismarine farm, where luckily Gemini Tay is there to give him a guided tour of the storage chests and agrees to let him freely borrow some Prismarine blocks for the next set of cards as long as he brings them back again at some point. The map project being a drain, hypnotized at least makes sure that the breaking of the blocks will go a little faster. As a response to a gift Elytra Beef dropped off at his doorstep, Hypno delivers him a beacon and enough iron for a full pyramid and then some. Guess he really just wanted to see Beef beam. Um, so I want to give him a beacon. I want to give him this iron. Oh man, is he going to see if I place it in here? Which is pretty generous on a hypno level. Anyhow, Tango Tech sends nine times that to both False Symmetry and Grian. Admittedly, they saved his butt nine times as hard. 
Now that Tango Tech can get a Wither Skull every 10 seconds, according to his video, A Wither Skull Every 10 Seconds, you'll never believe what he tries to do in his video titled, I Killed 239 Withers in 10 Minutes. Naturally, this many withers is not just more than a guy can kill in 10 minutes, it's more than a guy can place in 10 minutes. Not unless he has some sort of an automatic wither summoning machine that crams them into the roof of the nether. Tango tried to make such a machine. Tango did not succeed on the first try. Problem with the block glitching. Ow! Oh no, no, no! Oh, what have I done? Oh, oh no! So fighting three withers in the nether of all places is pretty hard. What withers find out is that fighting three hermits is also a problem. Green and False respond to Tango's emergency call, and he gifts them nine beacons each, which is not even a hit on his ungodly nether star supply. Unfortunately, the effect False will really need for her base is warmth, and the Eldritch Lamp doesn't exactly dispense hot cocoa. Having settled at a mountain peak, she now plans out the wireframe of the towers she will one day build, but gets sidelined by the easter egg event and how well the eggs can fit on an armor stand. Grian spreads his caviar as well, he is a cod after all. Though where False has broken ground on the Mountain of Madness, Grian may have broken the very fabric of reality. Looking for a weak spot between worlds, Grian descends to the edge of the Deep Slate layer. There he is able to open a vibrant pink void of glass, a colour out of space, as the Evo fans in the audience are throwing their drinks at the screen. It is sure an impressive beginning that is promised to dictate the rest of the base, but still I say shoot whatever comes out, just in case. Impulse's industrial district is no less colourful, as long as the colour you're after is green, because he doubles up the sugarcane farm with a bamboo farm on top. The aforementioned sugarcane will all be shifted as fireworks, which he prices competitively and starts selling out of the attic of his emeralds and totems business. Signing up for the egg hunt, Impulse Egg V is reminded, by the prize of all things, that netherite exists, and he tracks down enough debris to upgrade all his gear. And not a moment too soon, because every good dwarf needs a sturdy axe, and his plan for the base area he establishes with Pearl and Gem is to build a Tolkien-esque dwarven fortress under the mountain. We're gonna have a bit of the Lonely Mountain vibe going on, or Erebor, and maybe mix in some of the other style of dwarvish cities. Yeah, it's gonna be super fun! Pearlescent Moon is still watching the skies, and decides to reclaim some of the glass tractor beam from False Symmetry's UFO build to balance out how visible her alien statue is. She also balances out her base build with a new module on one side, where a set of stairs leads up to a shop with a unique product. Pearl is selling fully enchanted shears, with the added bonus that they all have incredibly punny names, and there are so many of them that we didn't dare write any puns into this segment in case she'd thought of them first. Who knows how many others didn't make the cut. Naturally, the ideal targets to advertise them to are people who'll be best placed to appreciate the wordplay, so Pearl tempts Corallus and Zombie Cleo into the shop and ends up with two very satisfied customers. This is great, Britney Shears! Uh huh. Oh, baby, baby. How was I supposed to know? Mm -hmm. Knob? Did you just say Knob? <laughs> <laughs> Doc M77 has a perimeter to destroy, so anyway, he started blasting. When the small TNT trencher is successful in digging the first two ravines, Doc makes the next one double wide, leaves his camera account riding it, and goes back to feeding stuff to Gary the goat and laughing at his own eggs. <laughs> Tiny Doc, I don't even want to hide those anywhere, I just want to keep him. He's got more important things to ride anyway, like a llama on the roof of the nether. In the technical community's latest answer to the question, what if piston bolts were faster and could also spit at you? Confirmed, this thing actually goes 30 blocks in uh, a second. Nice. This will be the way to travel between Randock Island and here. But as the egg hunt sweeps the server, Doc might have the last laugh, since nobody has yet found where he's hidden the turtle eggs, and he's recruited a fox to help throw them off the scent. To then, and that's, you know, one of those quirky things in the code, the fox will say, okay, then I'm gonna track to zero, zero. <laughs> And then zero zero will be loaded because the fox need. We will activate the zombie tracking again. That's something. Eventually, we just will walk to zero zero, I guess. And finally, there's Zedaf. And oh hey, where did my bread go? I wonder who's taken it. You see, Zed makes it a long-term goal to spy on Hermitcraft members. With a spyglass, he zooms in on the many unsuspecting people just going about their day, hoping to both remain unseen and take a good picture all the same. So he's basically using the telescope as an Instagram filter. <laughs> Dude, I've, I've been like listening. It's like. Where's the creeper at? I'm like, is he there? Because I was so sure it was a creeper. But then the sound, you know, like the, 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 
sound. I was like, what is that? <laughs> But the Polaroids are just one of the many self-imposed advancements, and to keep track of them all, Zed digs up a Hall of Fame tunnel, where the coveted cups will be displayed. So this is where he'd put his trophy, if he had one. It's really interesting too that these are meant to illustrate themselves, like the bucket jump trophy actually doing a bit of a flip whenever you press an adjacent button. It kind of works. Uh, you press the button, it falls down. Oh, it's climbing. It's climbing up a big long ladder, and it's gonna drop from world height and then catch itself. Yeah! It's all fun and games until you have to illustrate killing Scar somehow. And that's about it for this week's recap. Our writer is Loy XP, and my name is Pixlrifts. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.